The space shuttle program was very interesting. You'll get it this way. It was interesting. Remember when the space shuttle will take off? It had two rocket boosters on both sides of it. And the space shuttle will take off. You'll get this in a moment. The space shuttle will take off and those rocket boosters will take it to a certain altitude. But then those rocket boosters would fall off. Now, there wasn't anything wrong with the rocket boosters. They were designed to fall off at a certain altitude because they were not built to go in the shuttle's orbit. There are some people in your life who will take you to a certain altitude, but they must fall off because they're not designed to go in your orbit. May I give you a word of advice tonight? Please stop stalking people who God removed out of your life. the strategy involves the right people. You've got to have the right people around you. People can help you get the thing done. You need people that can make things happen, not people sitting around talking about it, but people who actually get things done. Listen very carefully, but then when you understand the power of having a plan, then you understand the power of perseverance, because it is not going to be easy. You see, you must understand that a part of your test, many of you are going through right now, personally, you're going through tests. And oftentimes when you go through tests, it's difficult to understand why. Because we would like to pass the test to other people. But see, promotion does not come by tenure. Promotion comes by passing tests. When you go through certain tests, it is preparing you for the readiness for the next level. And so the tests are necessary because I tell people all the time, you cannot be a testimony. You must really have a real testimony. What makes you an authentic leader is your story. What makes you who you are is your transparency. It's to tell people you've been there and done that. To tell people that you know what it's like to be up all night and to wonder and to cry and to be hurt and to be fallen and to be broken and to be in a place but yet pull yourself back up and realize that there is something inside of you, a certain resilience inside of you that won't let you quit. There is something inside of you that says, I am here for purposes greater than myself. So rather than sit back and complain and say, woe is me, I pull myself together, I wheel myself back up because I am here for something much larger than myself and so perhaps you come and there is that moment of there is that moment we all go through we have a situation and everybody here has a situation and we go through situations and you don't really control the situation because when you're a leader you just wake up and the phone can ring and you got a situation <laughs> when you're a leader <laughs> You can just turn a corner, somebody pass you a note, and there's another situation. Some of you came here today because you had to leave some situation. Some of you got somebody texting you now who ain't nothing but you. Situations come. The situations do not come without contemplations. Because when you have a situation, now here's where leadership steps up. Contemplation, what shall I do? <laughs> How do I handle this situation? Will this situation push me to the edge? Will this situation be the end of me? Or will this situation define who I am? Will my values and my character come forth? Will this situation determine my legacy? My contemplations? And perhaps we're here today, some of you contemplated resignation. Walking away from it all. Showing up. Being an encourager for everybody else and getting in your car and driving home and crying all the way home. Because nobody knows the weight and the burden of leadership because you oftentimes have to be everybody else's rock. You gotta be strong for everybody else and then you have to go. <laughs> and you have to say, Lord, well, what's up? Why, why is this happening to me? How's this going to play out in my life? Remember, there was a purpose in your life. And what God has started in you, he will perform until the day of Jesus Christ. It will never fail. It will never be aborted. It will always come to pass. It does not matter. And if the devil could have killed you, he would have done it by now. So let's be very clear. You are here with a purpose. You are here with greatness. You are here not to give up. You are here to make something happen. And so if you are struggling, the poet has said when you are up against the trouble, meet it squarely face to face, lift your chin and Set your shoulders, plant your feet, and take a brace. Stand and try to dodge and do the best you can do. You may fail, but you may conquer, see it through. And black may be the clouds about you, and your future may seem grim. But don't let your nerve desert you. Keep yourself in fighting trim. If the worst is bound to happen, despite all you can do, you, running from it will not save you. See it through. 
And even hope may seem but futile when we trouble your beset. But remember you're facing just what others have met. You may fall, but fall still fighting. Don't give up. Whatever you do, I spark head high to the finish. See it through. I don't care how old you are. Don't you think it's old for you? Because the older you get, the better you get. Some of you, you're letting people write you off. Anybody ever tell you? <laughs> Anybody ever tell you that uh, uh, Colonel Sanders was 64 when he started KFC? Anybody ever tell you that Leonardo da Vinci was 51 when he drew the Mona Lisa? Charles Darwin was 50 years old when he penned the origin of species. Nelson Mandela was 76 when he became president of South Africa. Abraham was 89, 99, and Sarah was 89. Should have been on their way to the gerontologist, but God sent them by the gynecologist. Because when God's hand is on your life, the older you get, you like fine wine, the better you gonna get. I close and thank you for the invitation tonight. Thank you for allowing me to be here. But I close to encourage you with this because that's often when you're leaders, you wonder how is it going to play out. There is origination and there is destination, and I'm in this place of frustration and hateration, and it's curious. I want to know how is this going to end. I grew up in Shreveport, Louisiana, and I I, uh, I loved Batman. I was a little kid, right? I I had everything Batman. My favorite hero was Batman. I had a Batman hat, Batman bike, Batman book, Batman everything. Everything was Batman. I knew every episode of Batman. And I would watch it intently, and one day Batman got in a fix. The Joker and the Penguin played a trick on him. They had Robin locked in the other room. He took Batman's utility belt and locked him in a safe. Time bomb was ticking. And then the TV played the unkind trick to be continued. <laughs> I went to school the next day, and the teacher was teaching, bless her heart, but I was just trying to figure out how Batman was going to get out. That teacher was teaching more, and I was just waiting for the bell to ring, and I jumped the, I jumped the fence and even catch the bus home that day. I ran home, sat in front of the television, and sure enough, the series came back on. Back then, they would say, meanwhile, and play it all over again. <laughs> and I saw Batman standing on top of the building when the episode was over, with his cape in the wind, standing there over Gotham City. And I was there with adolescent tears in my eyes because I was always a curious kid. And my daddy came to me and said, son, what's wrong? I said, dad, I don't understand. What do you mean? He said, dad, are they had Batman in the fix. See, Dad, I've seen Batman in a lot of stuff. I saw Batman with the Batmobile demobilized. I've seen Batman with a boulder on his ankle at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, but I've never seen this one, Daddy. I said, what? Tell me, son. What's up? I said, well, Dad, they had Batman. They had Robin locked in the other room, and they had Batman locked in the safe, and they had taking Batman's utility bill, and they had a time bomb ticket, and the Joker and the Penguin were taking over the city. <laughs> That's what they're saying happening now. <laughs> My daddy told me something I couldn't wait to come tell you. <laughs> Distinguished leaders of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> My daddy told me, boy, you don't know how Batman got out? I say, no, daddy, tell me. He say, Batman got out because it was written in the script. <laughs> I just came to tell somebody, you gonna make it because it's written.